that you know that's never going to happen again where you have just the be the emergence of a sport like this that becomes one of the biggest sports in the world yeah i think they should do tournaments again you think so multiple fights in a in a night just it would be wild I think they should start doing that, and then uh, it, it kind of gears it up to be an Olympic sport after that. What do you do, though, if you have um, injuries? Like, what if Well, if I think you've got to tame down the, the rules a little bit, but there's typically alternates when they do any MMA tournament. Right. But they have an alternate. Yeah, but, I mean, if someone, like, say if you have a war against one, like, say if, say if you have a war against somebody, and then the... The, in the next round, the guy who also fought, he has to pull out, and then they put it in an alternate, and he's fresh. Yeah, I mean, but they make the alternates fight. Oh, do they? Like, my oh, fight so with Bustamante was an alternate fight. Oh, I see. I see. So the alternates so fight. I actually could have fought again that night. I'm thankful I didn't. I didn't have any thumbs in a, in a, <laughs> and blown out in a skinny knee. <laughs> <laughs> For Just, sure. Is it is interesting when you see tournaments though because it's like you have a built in super fight, right? You have you see over the night guys winning and you know their style and so you're looking forward to the matchup when it comes to the main event. Right. I mean that was the early UFC. Right. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought UFC seventeen was a tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the tournaments were wild. The first one I went to was UFC twelve. That was when uh Vitor fought Trey Teligman and then he fought Scott Ferrozo. Mm. And, he, and he won the heavyweight tournament when he was 19. Right. Yeah. And then Randy came in after that, I guess. I just don't. Yeah, Randy was at, That was back when Vitor was like 240 when he fought Randy. He looked like yeah. his trap started at the top of his ears. Yeah. <laughs> he had a little bitty head on top of a huge body. Was he was crazy big. He was so bulked up. Well, it certainly would be exciting. I think the options that would be interesting are um, one 15-minute round. Instead of three fives, I think that would be very interesting, and then a tournament that that would also be very interesting if they decided to. Do, I mean, if someone wants to stand out from another organization like the PFL, the more big organizations, the better. I think for for the athletes, for sure, for the fans, for sure, and they have Francis Ngannou. You know, Francis Ngannou becomes their heavyweight, you know, poster guy, and you know he's their heavyweight champion. I mean, it could right. be very interesting if they throw a bunch of money at it. No, I agree. I, I think it's great for the sport and. You know, great for the the fighters. The athletes, yes, yeah. definitely great for the fighters. The fighters can't just have the UFC. They need, and it's good for the UFC too. Everybody needs competition. You know, the UFC needs the, and it it's great for the fighters. If you got the PFL bidding on you, you got one championship bidding on you, and you got the UFC bidding on you, that's a good place to bid. Well, for sure. If there's only the UFC around, you got to take what they give you. Yeah. And, you know, I was kind of in that boat for a bit mm -hmm. when the UFC bought Pride, and then yeah. I was in the UFC again, and then yeah. Strike Force came along, and I yeah. went there, and then they bought Strike Force. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. So I told the press, I said Dana is like a stalker. Chick. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he loves me so much, he's got to buy the companies. I'm, I'm the... You remember uh, Affliction? They were out yeah. for a hot minute. Yeah, that I think they they basically broke the bank when. Josh Barnett tested positive. He was yeah. going to fight Fedor, and the fight, they just yeah. canceled the whole event. Yep. And never uh, had another show. Dana didn't know about it. I'm pretty sure he was gambling. I think he was playing blackjack. And uh, I texted him, and I said, hey, did you hear what's going on? I go, Josh Barnett tested positive. And then he called me up. He goes, what the fuck's going on? And then I, I told him. He's like, holy shit. He was so happy. <laughs> 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 but... I would like to see the UFC in uh, in an arena. I think the UFC could do that. An outdoor uh, arena? Yeah, that Raiders arena. I think they could do that arena. Like what Pride just did, K1 yeah. did back in the Tokyo Dome. No, yeah. it was in the Saitama Super Arena. No, no, that's a enclosed. Well, oh, it is it enclosed? I think, yeah, it, it just stretches. They had a big arena. I didn't go to it, but they had like 80-some thousand people there at that. I think it was a New Year's Eve show. The only problem with that is you have to hope it doesn't rain. Yeah. When you um, look at the level of uh, fighting today, and 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 think about how it was when you started, do you are you proud? Are you proud that you were part of it in the beginning? Well, yeah, I'm definitely proud that I was part of that that journey. But I mean, I don't. I I I I still feel like there's 
certain things missing on some of these guys. You know, they're just not great at certain yet at some at anything, any one thing. Some of them, but they're really good at everything, but not spectacular. Not specialists. Yeah, yeah. But you have a few guys that are specialists, like Pajeda. You know, there's a few of the elite but, kickboxers. But, but then or, you see more. You know, you see where the holes are in their game too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, I think that it's definitely evolved into, you know, some guys that are extremely more, a lot more skilled and talented than back in the day, for sure. For sure. I just think maybe I think what's missing is some of the just the old school attitude. Well, the old school guys did it because they wanted to do it, and there wasn't really much money in it at all. You had to be really kind of crazy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, you had to be a wild motherfucker to enter into UFC 1 or UFC 2 or UFC right. 3. I mean, it was just, you had to be fucking crazy. It was funny. I, I, I came home from the 92 Olympics, and I was in my hometown in Victorville, which is in the middle of nowhere, and I went out to the local bar, and some guy was in there talking to me about, hey, you know, we're, we're getting ready to put on this show, you know, we're going to see who the toughest uh, toughest guys are, you know, from we're going to have a wrestler, boxers, and, and, and he's describing the UFC. And, and it happened about three months after that. It's like, yeah, we're putting together this show. We're about to do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, the UFC started. Wow. I have no idea who that guy was. <laughs> Just some guy you met at a bar? <laughs> yeah. I wonder who it was. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder what his gig was, what, what, what role he had in it. I found out about it um, from a local video store. I think someone had told me about it, and then I rented UFC 2. It was 94, and I just moved to L.A., and I remember watching it and going, holy shit, they did it. Because yeah. I always remembered thinking when I was back when I was kickboxing and taekwondo, like everybody always wondered, what would happen if a judo guy fought a wrestler? Right. What would happen if a boxer fought a karate guy? But to see it all actually happen, like, holy shit, this is nuts. And that was back when, you know, Hoist Gracie, it was just kind of getting started. And then jujitsu was everywhere. Just jujitsu schools just popped up everywhere. Right. And it was just like a complete revolution of, of martial arts where there had been, never been anything like that before. 